Excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I am Mally Moore. I am terrified. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Silver Linings playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings, and holy shit. What the fuck movie did you pick for us to watch? Weird. Guys, <laughs> this one was fucking bonkers in all of the best ways. Just bonkers cult shit. This and shit. I was here for it. I honestly, I kind of feel a little bad, Dustin, because I forgot how off the fucking rails this movie gets <laughs> at points yeah uh this movie got wild yeah um, like i remember <laughs> you were like when i first recommended it, you're like i don't know dude because you had never seen it yeah and you're like i don't know dude based off like the description it doesn't seem like it really fits i'm like no 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 trust me <laughs> it does yeah <laughs> usually if there's a movie that uh either of us want to do on the show but neither of us have seen i like to verify it sucks Especially for movies I haven't seen, to go on Wikipedia and like read like the last paragraph or two, because obviously that will spoil it for me in a lot of cases. But yeah, I just read the the uh, ending and I was like, ah, oh, kind of sounds like the fountain ending, but not as dreary. And then yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, this movie is insane. Um, it's Jesus, yeah. So if you are. Uh, <laughs> New to the show, uh, what we like to do on this show is watch movies like the movie we're watching this week, Apostle, that end in an uh, absurd or depressing or confusing or just rock and roll fucking endings that are out of nowhere. Uh, and we like to, you know, dig through the ashes and find a little glimmer of hope, a little flower bud, uh, something positive to gain from uh what we just watched uh this week on the show we're talking about <laughs> the uh netflix original apostle from gareth evans who oh yeah i am constantly getting confused with gareth edwards same okay i'm glad it's not just so me. am i <laughs> so 100 percent. if you're also like us uh gareth evans is the director of this movie the raid the raid 2 and VHS 2, he's got the best mm-hmm. segment, Safe Haven. And Gareth Edwards, probably more known to mainstream audiences, he is the director of Rogue One, Godzilla, Monsters, etc. But, uh... Yeah, uh, when this movie, like, was announced, I was like, oh shit, like, hell yeah, he did Godzilla and Monsters. Then I was mm-hmm. like, different guy. Different guy. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, I... also. S- Go Go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say, I didn't hear about this movie, and I feel like this is around a time where Dan Stevens is, like, becoming a household name, almost, and I'm surprised that I never heard of it. Yeah, see, I'm a big Dan Stevens fan, because I don't know if anyone's familiar with the show Legion on FX. It's technically an X-Men show, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but it is the most bonkers I say bonkers a lot. Yep. Like, it is fucking trippy, dude. Like, it... Oh, my God. Like, I I don't even know how to describe it. It's... Yes, it is based off characters from the X-Men comics, but it is dark, twisted, fucked up, like, hurts your fucking brain sometimes, like, trying to figure out what's going on in all the best ways. Like, dude, it is... Like, so the premise of that show is, like, Dan Stevens plays um, the character of Legion from the comics, who is the son of Professor Xavier, Mm -hmm. and is, he is a, um, not psychopath, um, telepath, Telepath. just like, (laughs) yeah, just like Xavier, but he has, like, split personality disorder. So imagine someone like that, if they were, like mentally ill pretty much and oh my god it's aubrey plaza's in it and like Mm -hmm. she's fucking crazy like highly recommend legion it's on my watch list for sure it's three seasons all solid 
All right. Um, but I was really big. Like I was watching. I think what year did this come out? 2018. Yeah. So I think I was I was watching season two at the time, and so I was like, "Fuck yeah, Dan Stevens!" Like, oh, like okay, cool. Like, what's he up to? Like, oh, he's got this movie coming. Oh, he's got a Netflix movie coming out. Cool. Oh, the guy that directed Godzilla? Because I'm an idiot. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And then, like, the trailer dropped, and I was like, oh, it's a cult movie? Mm. And, yeah, then it dropped on Netflix, and I was like, um, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, Also, going back to our our intro, where we said you had never seen it before, Mm -hmm. I also, within, like, a day of Dustin watching this, I caught him fucking referring other people to it on twitter yeah <laughs> yeah like i was just scrolling through my twitter feed and, it, and like someone i didn't follow posted something and i just saw a response from dustin that just said oh bro you should check out this movie apostle it's got this i'm like oh you son of a bitch well it was somebody specifically talking about dan stevens in the mm-hmm. guest which is a fantastic movie as well and yeah. i was like well this is fresh um, in my brain i gotta tell this person to watch this as well yeah. um it's like i like that like i think Dan Stevens' two, like, movies that he's done the past couple years are, like, this and Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is also, <laughs> this guy's career is is crazy as well. But, you know, he's fantastic in everything he does. He's really yeah, good he's in this great. movie. Um, but, yeah. So, Mally, won't you tell me about the first time you saw this movie? What was your reaction? I mean, I was just sitting in my living room, you know, queued it up, because it would come out on Netflix, and... <laughs> which is like i didn't know what to expect i was just like it's gonna be dan stevens okay like cult movie tight and god damn it this movie's brutal fucking <laughs> goes for it dude like it yeah. does not pull punches at all also maybe it's just me big silent hill vibes at points yeah yeah i was gonna say silent hill um very almost like the witch uh, from Robert Eggers yeah. as well. Little, little Wicker Man thrown in there. Yeah, like, I remember my first note when this movie started, because I was getting the same vibes. I was like, if this movie's like The Witch, I'm going to be pissed. Because I'm not a big <laughs> fan of that movie. But, yeah, it does go full Silent Hill. Like, uh, have you seen The Raid? His his uh, Kung Fu movie? Yeah. Yeah, it's I fucking I didn't see great. The Raid Redemption. That's the first one, and then the second one is The Raid to some other subtitle. But Wait. Yeah, no, Redemption raid is the Redemption's first one. Raid Redemption sec- is the first one? Yes. <laughs> oh, wait, then that is the one I've seen. I thought... I'm pretty I... sure. I'm pretty sure, because I remember I making know. that same mistake. Um, anyway. anyway uh, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, what he does with... Like, the kung fu hand-on-hand fighting in the raids, he does with horror in this movie. Like, he goes... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Holy so... fuck. The Raid Redemption is the first one, and then the second one is just called okay, The Raid 2. Okay, I didn't see The Raid 2 then. Yeah, I've seen bits of it, but... See, I always just thought it was The Raid and The Raid Redemption. You would I think... I didn't realize... <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, this was my first time seeing this movie. Uh, I didn't watch the trailer first because I like to go in blind for movies I haven't seen uh, for this oh, show. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So oh, God. <laughs> I just remember seeing like the apostle and uh, the apostle, seeing the title and the poster and being like, okay, I, this seems like it's going to be like, oh, this guy goes to this island, tries to find his sister. There's some sneaky shit going on. I did not expect it to go <laughs> Silent Hill level. Like, oh fuck, okay. It comes out of nowhere. Like I was you expecting really this to be, went in cold then on this. Shit. <laughs> I expected this to be a much more tame movie, like just a no. period piece. Yeah, um, like because I know this we're we're kind of following our cult trend. This is by far the most batshit. Yeah, of cult movies we've covered. I remember too the second. I sat up and was like, what the fuck am I watching? And it's, I you might be able to pinpoint it if I had to have you guess, but there's a specific moment fairly early on in the movie, and yeah. it it just switches gears immediately. Uh, we'll get to that when we uh, talk about the movie, but first, why don't we talk about <laughs> the details surrounding <coughs> the uh, movie Apostle. Okay. 
So as I said, the year is 2018. Director is Gareth Evans, not Gareth Edwards. Uh, the movie stars Dan Stevens, Lucy Boynton, Michael Sheen, uh, Christine Froseth, Anne Zellwey, Mark Lewis, and Ellen Reese. Um, the movie currently sits at an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. And because this is a Netflix movie, there's not really any information about like budget or gross. Yeah. So... Plus, Netflix doesn't like Moving to give on. out their ratings and viewers and all that kind of stuff, so we don't have any other information on this movie. <laughs> Damn it. We have to do less research than usual, son of a bitch. Yeah. Well, speaking of research, why don't we uh, research this trailer so that way, uh, if people aren't aware of this movie, they can at least get an idea of uh, what we're talking about. Thomas. Your sister. She's gone. These people, they're blasphemers, a cult, a disease. Bring her home. Name? Thomas Richardson. I dream of a world Lucy boy. in which each waking mm-hmm. day we rise Fucking Michael Sheen. This island. It's our paradise. We have an intruder on our land. We have to find him. They've seen things. Who are you? I love what they're doing with the music and the sound design in this trailer. Into the edict of this land. The promise of the divine. Yeah. God. (laughs) Yeah. God is pain. God is suffering. Beware false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Let us begin. Yep. That's the raid right there for you. I think they gave away a little too much in this trailer. A, a little bit, but also, god damn. <laughs> yeah, like they gave a little way a little too much about the the hooded dude, like and all that kind of like what's really going on here stuff. I think that would have been much better to keep that stuff under wraps. Yeah. Um, and For sure. also a little too much with the whole Jeremy Quinn thing that happens at the end of this movie. That would have been a better surprise mm. if um, yeah. we didn't see him getting put into the torture device and everything, which we'll get there. Um, but yeah, other than that, a fantastic trailer. Like I said, the music and sound design combination with the uh, the switchblade and everything is fucking great. Um, I love when when trailers do that. They can find that little motif to tie everything in. So Oh, for sure. Why don't we talk about the movie? Um, the... Opening shot of the trailer is also one of the opening shots in the movie, but I was getting very uh-huh. shining kind of vibes with the sweep yeah, over the lake there. I sure. love that. Um, yeah, and I also was getting some Wicker Man vibes, like you mentioned too, but, you know, this movie goes, uh, you know, we talked about Midsommar a couple weeks ago. Uh, this movie goes in a different direction than that. That one has yes, way more Wicker does. Man vibes. This goes in the Silent Hill but direction. Like good Wicker Man vibes. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's like just Wicker whole... Man. It's like Silent Wicker Hill Man. <laughs> just the old uh, the letter at the beginning of Come to this island alone and save me. That's very Wicker Man right there. Oh, 100%. But uh, yeah, I like that they subverted that and went in a totally different direction. Um,. Where do we want to start, though, other than that? Because I've got... I don't even fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go uh, talk about Dan Stevens, since he is the uh, yeah. police are? Um, God, he's so fucking good. Um, he is. It was weird, like, because... I don't know, like, it's... Because, again, the first time I watched this was after, like, watching Legion, where he does an American accent. Yeah. 
And I, it's like, it's like one of those things where it's like, I didn't realize really until the prestige that Christian Bale was actually British. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like I had no idea. Yeah. And um, so Dan Stevens, like when he starts talking, I was like, oh, he's doing a good, nope, that's, that's his real voice. That yeah. makes sense. Well, I'm like, <laughs> he's got this real fucking grit to him. Like he's talking through his teeth, like he's got a mouthful of just. Like, he's just been biting on his cheek for a century. Like, I love the delivery he's got in this movie. He's so, he's seething like, and he's got a grizzle. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's great that they, they hold off as long as they can to tell you why he's like that. And the oh, scene of him in, that's in China. my favorite part of the movie. It It is so fucked up, but it is such a beautiful scene. That cinematography the lighting that like just fucking camera that rotating yes. camera shot dude oh well, him God. just on his knees having his arms stretched out by rope and just in front of that burning cross is oh, it's it's a renaissance kind of painting yeah it's, you don't and see then, god the fucking yeah uh, i mean i love that we don't cut away from it too much but we also don't get all of the gory aspects of that branding. Right. Like, I love that it's not about him being tortured. It's about him losing his faith instantly. Yeah. Like, immediately, he's like, I, my whole life was a, a lie. Like, right down to it. And that's, it's great that they don't give you that up front. I love that that's, like, almost three-fourths of the way through the movie that we learn about that. I, um, I will say, like, um earlier like kind of when you see like the him getting the letter mm -hmm. and whatnot to go to the island i kind of wish he looked like that the whole movie <laughs> like just fucking long hair bearded just yeah. like fucking i was like that's the fucking dan stevens i'm here for yeah i mean we talked about it he's been in some movies he's even part of the disney verse at this point but i just don't know why he's not a bigger household name maybe it's still kind of early yeah. on in his career but this dude deserves yeah. A lot, a lot. He needs to be in he's, a lot more stuff. He's been in a decent amount of stuff, but it's, he's, you know, he's not like, he hasn't gotten that big, big breakout thing role yet. yet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, let me see. I'm going to look up what what he's got in the like, works. I'm sure a lot of people probably know him from, uh, what's that fucking British show? Uh, Is he on Downton Abbey? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Downton Abbey, yeah. Uh, who is, he was in The Call of the Wild. I didn't see it, though. Lucy in the Sky, which I have wanted to see, but I haven't seen it yet. I have not seen that. He's in Her Smell. Have you seen that? The Elizabeth Moss movie? No. Is that like the Elizabeth Moss like punk rock movie? Yeah. I tried watching it. it you might like it, actually. Just, and I don't want to tell you why, but I, I know you would at least be interested in it once it gets to a certain point. But I couldn't make it all the way through. I just, Interesting. I just wasn't a big fan. Um... Yeah, I mean he's he's definitely done work. He's but he's flying under the radar. The guest was like the biggest thing I remember him being in and uh, being in that where he was like the main focus of it. Yeah, um, well, so besides would, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, but I mean he's also <laughs> under all that makeup and shit. So yeah, which um, oh my god, the the BTS videos of him like in the fucking CGI suit, um, like with all like the big padding on him, he looks so fucking hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean he's great. Uh, Michael Sheen, fucking killing it, fuck, dude, killing it, it in this movie. He got a he. He kind of looks like fucking. He reminds me of uh, Andy Serkis in this movie, like yeah. from uh, like yeah. Andy Serkis from uh, fucking Avengers: Age of Ultron, and yeah. like, also Black Panther. He's got a very very similar look, yeah, yeah. But God, dude, he's just fucking crushing it. I, I mean, he I, always fucking crushes yeah. it, but, like, he's... God damn. I also love that the little twist on his character that you think, oh, this guy is, you know, ruling with an iron fist, and he's got leverage over this people because this is his village mm -hmm. and everything, and then the truth at the end that it was Quinn that... Yeah, like, he's kind of built work. up as the protagonist, or the antagonist. Yeah. But yeah. they kind of flipped out on you. But I mean, he is. I'm one of my notes was that he's a real one. With uh, he has that line of if one of us bleeds, we all bleed. Like if anybody in this village is attacked, we're all attacked. That's a true leader. Yeah. You know so what I mean? What was the moment in the movie that made you go, "Oh fuck"? 
So you said it was kind of early on. It's so it was really funny, and uh, I was watching this with Priscilla, and um, we got to the part where he gets you know when he first gets to the island, he gets handed a glass and like a jar and like a rock or something yeah. like that. Well. I was like, all right, that's weird. But then when he gets to the part where he's going to his room at night and he sees all the jars of blood put out on, on uh. the uh, – So I was watching that and I said to Priscilla, I was like, if if that was me, I would just take someone else's blood and pour it in my jar. And that's exactly what he does. <laughs> um, yep. But then, you know, there's the – what happens, happens. He spills some of it. It runs down into the floorboards. And then there's just the woman lapping up the blood like a fiend. And that's where I set up and I'm like, okay, clearly I don't know what this movie's going to be about. <laughs> I was like, this is, this just went up to a hundred real quick. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, if you hadn't seen, cause I, again, I didn't realize you didn't watch the trailer beforehand. Yeah. I had so, no clue. <laughs> that's amazing. I wish I had been able to watch this with you because that would have been so much fun. It's, I mean, that's Priscilla too. It was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> it's like uh, in Parasite when you first learn about the bunker. You're just like, whoa, hold yeah. on, hold on. <laughs> Damn, we should. Oh man, I would have. Oh, we should have gotten Priscilla on this episode. I would have loved to hear her thoughts on this movie. Man, I would. A movies like this, I think, would do so well for a commentary. Like, especially if one of us has seen it and the other one has it, and we know it turns into something oh, like that. Oh, for sure. Because it be would have just been me just giggling the whole time. Just like, yep. <laughs> yep. Um, oh, Lucy shit. Boynton uh, does real well in this Dude, movie. I've, I've loved her. I know. I don't think you've seen it. I talk about it constantly, but Sing Street, oh my mm-hmm. god, she's so fucking good in that movie. The only thing I really know her from is Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, yeah. Which she's, she's I mean, good she's in that. a couple things. Um... <laughs> She was also in a oh what's it called uh, uh da, 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 Black Coat's Daughter. Oh okay. Which was um it's not a great it's it's an entertaining movie. That's on um, my uh that's on my queue right now because I wanted to watch it. I, I would I it. would check it out. I think that came that might have been before Sing Street maybe. Yeah. Um, she's good in that. She's really good in that. There's I do have one big issue with that movie. Like there's a really big logic jump in that film okay <laughs> that really is it's only downfall in my opinion but she's um, also in uh i am the pretty definitely thing check that it lives out. in the house which i've wanted to see i don't even know what that is um 2018 and 17 was a pretty good year for her she was in murder on the orient express this movie and bohemian rhapsody uh i am the pretty thing oh, is also wait. a netflix movie it's a horror movie oh wait oh that's the same oh Okay, no, I am familiar with that. That's the same guy that did Black Coat's Daughter. Well, that would make... Damn, he did two movies back-to-back with her then. Like, one in 2015 and one in 2016. Uh, No, she's great in this movie. My only issue is that uh, she is way too old to be Michael Sheen's daughter. I don't buy that. You think? I I see them together and I'm like, "Mm, that's a bit of a stretch. Michael Sheen doesn't seem that old to me. Like, he seems like he's, like, early 40s, and she seems like she's, like, 28. So, you know, I mean, mean it's possible. Maybe, you know. It's it's <laughs> possible, but, yeah, I I don't know. She she looks like, um in this movie, she looks a, a lot like a young Nicole Kidman to me. I mean, either uh, neither here nor there, but. Uh, in the face, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, but, no, she's fantastic in this movie. I love that there's. Not really much of a love story between her and Dan Stevens. Like, it, there's not yeah, time for that. I think that, that. would have dragged it down. Yeah, there's not time for that in this movie. This movie yeah, goes. Once shit, once one thing happens in this movie, everything happens in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you said, zero to a hundred immediately. Yeah. Like, once one, like, once it's like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, just for the next hour. <laughs> can I tell you, you'll appreciate this, but um, <laughs> as I said, I was watching this with Priscilla. We didn't watch the trailer, so we had no idea what was going to happen, what was going on. Um, <laughs> during the scene where Dan Stevens is in his house and Michael Sheen uh, drags out his sister out into the street and he's threatening to kill her yeah. unless someone comes out. Dan Stevens has this liquid that he's 
taking little eyedroppers of throughout the entire movie. Um, I'm guessing some kind of medicine or something that he needs. Do they ever really fully explain that? I don't think so. But you know what I'm talking about, though, that little vial that he takes. Right. Uh, well, in that scene, he realizes that he's empty and he shatters it. And he's, like, freaking out, like, internally, like, just shaking and because he doesn't know what to do. Both Is it of like liquid cocaine. Both of us thought he was going to turn into a werewolf, <laughs> just because like what <laughs> he like falls to the floor and it almost seems like he's like the scene from uh, American Werewolf in London. He just I don't know. There's something about his performance in that scene. I was like, this is about to change into something. <laughs> and I was like, if this... that would have been fucking awesome. <laughs> well, honestly, I, I said in my notes too. I was like, if this man turns into a werewolf. This is the best movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> but alas, he does not. And we still get a pretty good movie out of it. <laughs> but uh, no, I just I just thought it was funny. I was like this. This would happen in this movie. Like, I wouldn't be that surprised, but god damn, it would be fucking rock and roll as shit if he did. <laughs> um, I love <clears throat> how intelligent Dan Stevens is in this movie. Like, when he gets to, <clears throat> excuse me, the scene where um, Michael Sheen is dragging in all the outsiders because he knows one of them isn't who they say they are. And <laughs> I got this little, you know, He's going down the line, Michael Sheen is, and making all these guys recite their his specific Bible that he's made for the island. And you realize Dan Stevens didn't do his homework. And he gets I mean he gets super lucky there with that guy who is also there to kill Michael Sheen. But the fact that like yeah, he right? like <laughs> he's smart enough to make himself the victim there. I mean, I don't think he intended to be stabbed, but I think, like, right. showing his honor by trying to defend Michael Sheen, in which case saved Michael Sheen's life, because for sure he would have died. But, mm-hmm. dude, that guy getting impaled by all the different spears and then just standing there was mm-hmm. so fucking intense. Like, I mean, that's, like I said, if you've seen The Raid, you know what this guy can do with action. And you get yeah. very little of it in this movie, but the ma- the parts that you do get yeah. are fucking worth it. Like, yeah. every single An- action scene is intense. Another thing we don't get a lot of in this movie is comedy beats. Yeah. And there's one we kind of glossed over oh, towards yes the beginning. We did. Yes, we did. God damn it. When he's on it. the boat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Dude. Oh. I have never <sighs> laughed harder at anything. <laughs> Neither have I. And like I said, I didn't know what this movie was. When this happened, I laughed to tears. And Priscilla was just so, mouth agape. But he's, There's like a fucking goat yeah. freaking out. Dude, he yeets that goat into the fucking ocean. <laughs> Like, oh. Dan Stevens is, like, trying to, like, calm this goat. This guy sitting across from him, he takes it. And By he the doesn't, feet. He, he doesn't <laughs> throw it. He slides it like he's playing shuffleboard. He straight up yeets that fucking off goat. Off of the <laughs> edge of the boat. <laughs> and well, he just... I, I love that that is... Because that's the same guy that he switches the invitation to the island with to throw off the scent. <laughs> That he's the betrayer. Like, I love that that comes right after. So you get the justification of, oh, well, this guy deserves whatever's coming to him. <laughs> like yeah, that. But goddamn, like. Oh, it's so funny. He fucking slides this fucking thing. Like, never in my mind did I think, like, if I look at a sheep, I don't think I could slide that 10 feet across yeah, these. I could this, bowl the this thing floor. down the lane. <laughs> <laughs> like. It's so, like the the sound like the sound of the goat. Yes, is what makes it so funny. It's so funny, dude! Just, it's, it's so quick. <laughs> like Dan Stevens so doesn't even fast. have a doesn't even have a chance to calm the goat. <laughs> the guy just grabs him on the feet and throws him down this fucking boat. <laughs> yeah, if, he's like, only she decides what lives. Yeah, uh, uh, I think you just made the decision. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't seen this movie, we haven't spoiled too much. I highly recommend you at least watch the first ten minutes just to see that. Because holy shit, yeah, that's worth that's amazing. worth it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> Let's talk about the score. I found the score in this movie that, to be... That is a perfect representation of me handling my problems in 2020. <laughs> just, just no time for that shit. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Uh, I found the score in this movie to be really effective. It's... I, I don't oh, know who yeah. composed it. I'm gonna look it up right now. But it's, it's rad. Like, it's just so intense. Everything is so tense in this movie. Uh, and in no small part to the composer. Uh, let me see composer and or music by i guess fill dead air yeah uh, i don't know uh, is there anything you want to talk about while i'm looking at uh, this up? matt flannery matt flannery okay is his name well oh, that's the cinematographer oh yeah <laughs> <My fault. laughs> but also shout out to matt flannery because god damn this movie looks good oh music by fahar Yuzakamal and area prio all right well shouts out to him because yeah i guess oh <laughs> uh, i mean this is the cinematographer. Really this is uh gareth evans uh cinematographer like he did the raid the raid 2 and this movie so and rogue one different guy yeah rogue one's <laughs> a different guy yeah but no we're the, gonna i'm i'm not yeah. even jokingly like, i'm still gonna fuck that up <laughs> yeah that's all right i mean i probably will too because there's not a whole lot of gareth's in the film industry that are prominent like that's so i mean gareth evans edited this film as well he's director and editor no shit and writer so um okay so the two people that scored this Mm -hmm. i mean their credits are the raid movies vhs2 abc's of death like so it's yeah his composers so they're known for doing heightened movies like either action movies like the raid or horror like this in vhs which i gotta say we briefly talked about it but his little segment VHS two is worth watching that movie alone. Like the rest of them are fine, but Safe Haven is fucking crazy. That's the Filipino one. Um, if you remember anything about that movie, um, oh. which also has the unfortunate uh, experience of being named the same as a romantic movie, romantic drama Safe Haven. <laughs> so yeah, if don't. It'd be funny if somebody recommended that movie and then they ended up watching the VHS one. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> um, all right. Should we jump to the more horror aspects of this movie? Like when we do get the reveal oh, of what yeah. is happening. So correct me if I'm wrong, but Michael Sheen and his two brothers came to this island to escape living wherever they lived in London or whatever mm-hmm. um, because they didn't. You know, they wanted to live by themselves and start their own village. Um, They came to this island. They found this deity that was there. And they realized whenever they fed her blood that she would make the floral grow. Like the the plants and trees and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so... Pretty much made the island prosperous. Yes. So they decided we'll set up shop here. (laughs) <laughs> we'll farm, we'll grow a community, and we'll just, you know, give her blood sacrifices to keep the island prosperous. And by the time Dan Stevens gets there, uh, there's not a whole lot going on. They've run out of things to give her, right? Like, the ground isn't as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it can't grow crops as easily. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Like. Because this is kind of one of the big reveals is that, you know, they were feeding it animals and all this thing. Yeah. And they ran uh, out of animals. Quinn, yeah. Quinn was like, feed it humans. Yeah. And that's kind of where the big, like, tension between those two grew from. Yeah, the... that's the word. I was, I was like, could not think of the word tension. <laughs> yeah. Between uh, Martin Sheen and the Quinn character kind of came from. So the first. That, Quinn, that Quinn's like, you know, I'm like. He was afraid to do what was necessary. But yeah, like, he's oh, doing. Yeah. The, he's making the tough calls. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the first instance that Dan Stevens realizes that something otherworldly is going on is when he's in that tunnel trying to get to where his sister is being kept, and Michael Sheen, you know, is waiting there with the gun at the top of the well, and he he decides to escape through that little tiny tiny tunnel crawl spacey thing. And he Fuck sees that scene. Oh my god, that is my nightmare. I'm extremely claustrophobic. Terrifying. As I'm ex- am I. Yeah, and it's 
He's barely got even a foot of headroom above that dirty, yeah, like, I gross think I texted water. you during that scene. I was like, I forgot how terrifying this is. I mean, even as an actor in that scene, I would. I don't know if I'd be able to do it. Like, it's skin yeah, tight. Sure. It is skin tight in that tunnel. It's it's worse than buried to me, man. Like, it's. I don't know about that. I mean, buried. He at least had some room, like a little bit of elbow room. I'm just gonna say, as a claustrophobic person, if you ever want to like be a masochist watch videos of people exploring the insides of the pyramid fuck dude no it's like dude oh. it's like it's them going like a hundred feet through a tunnel like that inside of a pyramid my my yeah my it's worst the most <laughs> terrifying thing i don't know why i watched it like it was something from i think that might be the reason i'm claustrophobic because i watched those when i was little in school and just be like nope nope fuck that nope nope absolutely not nope yeah, I know. I just my worst fear is like being trapped like in between walls or or under a house where no one can hear me or get to me. Oh, and, and he's so he's out the trash compactor scene in Star Wars really terrifying for you? <laughs> not not that much. At least they have some room. <laughs> but uh, I think it's the ending of Saw Five. Saw I, Five. Yep, where he gets that, crushed by yep, that. Yep. 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 That that's my just, nightmare. Uh, just talking about the Saw franchise with someone yesterday. Yep, that that is the worst part to me. <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you, though. Like, that that scene, like, him, like, not, like, obviously him, like, that being such a small space, but then, like, the screeching deity yeah. just adds to the fucking, like, oh, fuckness of the whole thing. <laughs> like, dude, like, mate, I think it might be because of, uh, oh, what's the fucking game with the fucking crying thing like where it's like you hear like is it the it's not the last of us is it left oh well the last of us left has the for, clickers left left for dead has the witch that's crying and if you get too close okay, to left her for dead then yeah like kind of it kind of reminded me of those things yeah because like when you get near those things they're fucking terrifying <laughs> yeah um no like that the, it's interesting too when they show the woman coming out of the water, she's clearly got a lot more room. And then when they cut back to Dan Stevens, he's in a much more confined area, which I noticed. I thought that was pretty interesting. Like, from his yeah. perspective, she's got all the room she needs. And, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, just filming that must have been awful. Like, you're getting that oh, I'm sure. gross stuff I'm sure in this eyes. movie wasn't terribly fun to film. <laughs> no. Like, there's no way it was. No. But, um, I mean, this... <laughs> one, one of my notes was... Uh, people in this movie just love making themselves bleed. Like, there's a lot of people that are just cutting their wrist or just... There's yeah, a, lot a lot of, of blood. A lot of open wounds in this film. A lot Not of open infections. wounds. Yeah. <laughs> I was just watching... I was rewatching 1917 last night and, you know, uh, uh, Schofield in that movie when he gets his hand cut on the barbed wire and then puts it immediately into a dead body's rib cage. Uh. I'm like... There's God. there's a lot <laughs> with with open wounds and movies. My entire when I saw that movie in theaters, my entire theater went ooh. Yeah, same here. Everyone was like, oh, <laughs> so much infection should be happening that's not happening in movies. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> moving I, on. Yeah, do we want to talk about uh Quinn and Jesus Christ? The scene with him and his daughter and the little boy Jeremy. Ah. Uh. I mean, oh, there are some great, great movie assholes. Like, just people that are total dicks in movies. I It's hard-pressed to beat Quinn. Yeah, he's fucking up there, dude. That scene is so fucked up. So, he kills his daughter because she's pregnant, and he she's too young in his eyes, and it's an embarrassment like a to him. Forced abortion, forced abortion that leads to like, murder. Let like let's let's just think about that phrase. Yeah, forced abortion in 1905 as well. Yeah, so I mean, he straight up butchers his daughter, Jesus. and then gets into the fight with. Uh, Jeremy, the father, who has to walk in and see not only his dead uh, girlfriend there on blood bloodied on the floor, but know that his child's dead too. Uh, and he gets yeah. in a fight with Quinn, gets some pretty good 
fucking hacks at Quinn's neck. I don't know how he's still alive. He he gets some licks in. I mean, Quinn does get a little more pale throughout the movie, which I did appreciate. Like, yeah, that was a nice touch. Um, but yeah, the f- the the fact that he's able to go outside and twist what's happening there to make it seem like he was being attacked is, I mean. My fucking jaw dropped and my asshole pucker, dude. Oh, was, goddamn evil ugh. genius. I mean, so fucking evil. And then to have the the balls to then decide he's taking over the village and this vigilante justice of just t- just murdering this kid in the most horrific fucking way. Like, we talk about, you know, the Saw movies and how they're torturous and everything. This is worse. This is Oh yeah, no, this is so much worse. The just the cinematography of the effect of Jeremy in this restraints where they're turning his head and you can hear the bones cracking and the blood on the lens, like it's so fucking effective. It makes your stomach turn, man. And then of yeah, course not to mention the crank. God, like damn you, it. you see bits of it in the trailer, but like in context, it's even worse. Which I again, I wish they wouldn't have put that much in the trailer because I agree, whew, or at least not know who's in the crank. You know what I mean? But right, 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 right. And right. the fact that not even like a minute later, his father arrives. Like this is my. I'm so thankful to to have been born when I was born. I would not have survived. Any time before like 1980, I just couldn't have. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know. I don't know, man. Like this kind of how you can just turn that quickly. Like all you need is one person. It, I mean, they make fun of it in uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail of calling that woman a mm-hmm. witch. Just how easy it is to do that, and now you're dead. Yep. That I I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I would. I would. I don't know. I'd kill myself People were first. a lot more gullible then. <laughs> yeah, a lot more gullible. I mean, it's all you... No, I guess. I was going to say, all you'd have to do is at least show the villagers what happened to the daughter, but they would just blame that on Jeremy, too, probably. It's his, his well, yeah, death. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think he says, like, he killed my daughter. Yeah, like, I think that yeah you're right. Thing. He does. I mean, the death of Jeremy in this movie for... a you know, a fairly unimportant character for the most part. Like, it hits so fucking hard. You don't really see innocent people getting murdered that often, that young in movies. And right. Not in such a horrific fucking way. Oh, man. Yeah. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine going out like that. I think I would have fainted long before the crank touched my scalp. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, I mean, why would Ooh. anyone want to stand around and watch that? Like, especially, um... That, dude, that, I mean, that's the only source of entertainment they have. The entertainment. God. I mean... <laughs> I mean, Lucy what? Boynton... It's fucking true, dude. Lucy like, Boynton, of all people, should not be there watching that. Like, th- like think about, like, fucking, they, when they used to put, fucking put people in, like, the fucking... The uh, guillotine? guillotine and shit like that was the fucking like that was you know that was sunday night hbo baby i mean that was the quality content a guillotine i would be more you didn't want to be the one motherfucker at the next fucking (laughs) village gathering (laughs) being like yeah man do you you catch jeremy's execution no man i fucking miss it oh bro it was fucking wild i just feel like strapped you down they cranked man dude it was crazy the way they cranked that shit into his head like like you don't want to be that guy i guess oh shit like damn i missed it I feel like a guillotine... It's peer pressure, Dustin. Yeah. That just, shit's always around. I just feel like a guillotine is quick. Even hanging is fairly quick. But watching a kid get strapped into this machine and fucking having his skull drilled out by a hand crank, of all things, which I can't imagine is physically well, see, easy to like, do. Watching, like, a guillotine, that's like, you know, that's watching, like, you know, Big Bang Theory? Like a, a, a light, a light com- That's like going to the theaters watching 40-Year-Old Virgin. It's a light comedy. Yeah. This I, shit? Like, nah, like, that's... You watching a Fincher movie now. I get... No, uh, fucking... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> an Eli Roth movie. Jesus. Um, I do like, though, the fight scene also between that. Jeremy and Quinn. I think it's well choreographed. It, I kept getting so worried this kid was going to get stabbed to death. 
Um, really, this director choreographed a fight scene well. Huh? Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> if nothing else, Gareth Evans fucking knows how to choreograph some stuff, or at least get the right people in there to help him with that. Yeah, like he he knows how to direct. Yes, an action sequence yes, for sure, very well. Uh, I I don't think he has much on the agenda, but I hope he gets to be a bigger name. Uh, to like do a little a little more. He's got Deathstroke. Yeah, does he ha- does he have anything? Destro, uh, like well, the DC character. Destro? I think so, and it says it's rumored that he's going to be working on that. So I knows. would be very interested to see his take yeah. on that character. That's it's the DC Deathstroke movie. Uh, Is what's his name? Uh, Joe Ma. Yeah, yeah. Ma- Joe Mangagello. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is he is that would be. Yeah. Huh. I mean, I'd watch that, and he's got another movie called Blister, yeah. uh, action drama. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I know he's he knows how to direct, man, and to make in, intense yeah. feeling action so, scenes. Do you want to talk about where this movie gets full Silent Hill? So I guess that would be the <sighs> arrival of. Does this character have a name? The hooded guy. I I don't think they I refer think he, to him. No, by I th- name. I think in the plot summary he's called like the the grinder or something like that the gr- the gr- the grinder really i something like that i mean it's fucking correct yeah. but jesus <laughs> christ it's something like um, that yeah that's goddamn terrifying reminds me a lot of fucking uh pyramid head pyramid head yeah like i was getting very 100%. similar vibes obviously a smaller scale but very similar I mean, still still real effective uh, I'm oh, looking it yeah. up now to see what that character's like, name is. The moment that dude pops up, it's just like, oh, okay, this, um... The Grinder, yeah. Fuck. The Grinder. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, holy shit. I mean, just um, the just the shot of him dragging, uh, Dan Stevens' sister in that bag, and you can see the flowers starting to bloom along the side, it's... Yeah. I mean, you get the beauty of the flowers combined with the horror of this blood-soaked dude just carrying this body it's interesting dichotomy there like the duality of things growing and things dying it's pretty great um dude like dan stevens getting strapped to that well the, yeah that grinder thing holy i fuck, mean i that... thought he was gonna come out of that with no problem but he gets four out of five fingers destroyed i mean that scene again yeah it fucking choreographed Brutal. Choreographed well, fucking horrific. The hooks through the legs, brutal. Oh, like I said, this movie went. It went there like completely. I was not oh, expecting it, go, it, it. It fucking goes for it. Dude. I was ex- expecting like a western or something, and I was not expecting a western. <laughs> like like him going to a town, like not necessarily a western, I guess, but like a detective period piece kind of thing. I don't know, but oh, what? Nope. Yeah, not what I, not what not, I got. <laughs> not no, not that. Definitely not. Um, the death of Quinn also pretty great. I like how it, it kind of feels, fucking like like it's uh Dan Stevens versus the Grinder. Like you don't know what's gonna happen, and then like yeah, like Lucy Boynton taking his gun and not killing him, and instead shooting her chains. I got a little worried because she shot her chains and nothing happened. And I was like, oh, this girl wasted her one fucking chance. But then they managed to get Which, it. So. Right before that, like when uh, Dancy just bursts in and like attacks Quinn. Yeah. He shoots the gun and it explodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I noticed that too. I don't know what that, that was That was about. kind of a, like, I, I get what happened. Like the bullet, like ricocheted off the stone, spark, fire. Yeah. It when just I looked like it, that. it made sense. <laughs> but at first I was like. He got exploding bullets. Like what the fuck? Yeah, like um, that was that, I, that was kind of a, that was a bit of a weird choice given the everything else going on in the scene. Like, yeah. oh, what if the bullet explodes when it hits the wall? It serves no purpose, really. <laughs> it's oh. just like, oh, that'd be like okay, I guess. Um, but yeah, dude, and like Dan Stevens gets fucked up. Like Quinn pulls that knife out, just like stabs Guts him up. one five times in the enough fucking side times, there enough times that i almost didn't believe that he would have made it all the way to the beach or like the hilltop over the beach yeah like they pushed that one a little yeah. bit but then so he stabs quinn in the chest and then like lucy boyden and them like they get out of their chains they use their chains to choke him mm-hmm. and then the most brutal part they're like choking him but kind of pulling him towards them at yep. the same time 
Dan Stevens grabs the knife stuck in Quinn's chest and just holds it. Yep. So that it like is ripping down yep. Quinn's chest. Yeah. And oh my, the it's sound effective. effect. It is effective. Holy <laughs> shit! So I say, man, Dude, this movie sound, is brutal. The sound design of this movie is used effectively. effectively yes. Because they do not shy away from the <laughs> yeah sound and yeah Ooh. uh one of the little scene that we skipped over we talked about how holy shit well choreographed action gareth evans gets i loved when dan stevens is being held prisoner when quinn is taking over and he's got those two guys oh, yeah and he breaks out we see a little bit of it in the trailer but yeah he kicks that dude in the leg and then takes the spear and shoves in the other dude's cheek it's some raid style fighting that yeah. there's not a lot like, of in this all movie. All of a sudden, Dan Stevens becomes a ninja. It's so fucking good. It's believable <laughs> it's too. Fucking rad. And it's believable. That's the best part. It's not. It's not that crazy. But yeah, we we get a little bit of raid uh, style fighting, and I love yeah, like, it. That's one of the moments where you're like, oh yeah, this guy did direct the raid movies. <laughs> it's like his little <laughs> reminder of, hey, I can still do this shit. So, um, all right, is there anything else we want to talk about before we get to the ending? No, let's jump into it. All right, do you want to recap it for us? So they kill Quinn, and um, like while this is happening, like everyone's like pretty much like um. So after Dan Stevens gets away from the grinder, he kind of has this little moment with the goddess, like the deity, mm-hmm. and she kind of like comforts him. Yeah, she he, like she really, gives him some weird vision, like the weird eyes yeah. and shit. Um, and like kind of like soothes him, and then like she pretty much is like, you know, like put me out of my misery. So yeah. he immolates her, like mm-hmm. lights her on fire, and then so that's burning down, and everyone in the village is like, yo, fuck this. Yeah. And fuck. they're like running, <laughs> running to this boat to try to get off the island. And so he goes and like they kill Quinn, but you know, Dan Stevens is fucking gutted at this point. And missing four fingers. Let's not forget that. And yeah. Um, and so, like, he kind of collapses as they're running, and he's, you know, like, his sister and Andrea are like, you know, come on, he's like, no, like, you know, you have to go without me, like, you know, pray for me, like, get the fuck out of here, so they kind of, yeah, they have this little moment, um, where, you know, with his sister, where he's like, you know, like, everything has always been so fucked for me, but you were always the light in life and, you know, go live your life and that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Really, you know, beautiful moment. Um, so they go and it's just like Dan Stevens is just kind of like laying there. Like they get off the island and then, you know, Michael Sheen, who had been injured previously, um, you know, fell down in that pit and shit. Um, he kind of just sits there with him. They have this little moment and Dan Stevens' character lays back on the grass, and the grass starts growing, flowers start blooming around him, and, like, roots and shit start coming out and fusing with him, Yeah, signifying that he is the new island deity, and then cut to black. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, it. Done. Like, it's a fucking abrupt rock and roll ending yes it is like because you don't see the full like you just get yeah some flowers start blooming and like roots start going to his face his eyes start doing weird shit and then cut to black like they don't drag it out they're like and this is what's gonna fuck you yeah it's real real quick (laughs) yeah like like the i remember the first time i watched this movie it cut to black i was like oh fuck like i thought my tv turned off and then the credits started i was like oh I like nope, it though. It's a good it ending. Is. It's a good ending. Oh, great ending! We don't need. Yeah, I like how there's not like a speech or anything between him and Michael Sheen. They both just kind of sit there, smile at yeah. one another, and then that's just the end. Like it's it's like a kind good... of a, like a little like acknowledgement of like huh, fuck. Yeah, this didn't go <laughs> like, how we that planned. Was fucked. That was fucked, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So why don't we jump to uh, one of my favorite segments of the show, Prop Cop. Which is, of course, where we uh, pick one prop from the movie that we would like to own for ourselves. And we've kind of loosened the term prop (laughs) to mean really anything from the movie. But, Mally, why don't you tell Um, me what you want? I want the Switchblade. Yeah, I I kind of wanted it too. 
the straight razor or the switchblade? Like you know, I love knives. Yeah, I love me a good knife. Yeah. Um, I went with the little purity symbol flower looking thing. I Aww. I don't I think it was a flower, but I couldn't tell. They don't really make a whole lot of it, but it's uh it's the one that Quinn puts inside Jeremy's empty oh, skull. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like that. My my second choice would be Michael Sheen's beard. <laughs> because solid beard. Solid beard. Solid beard. Solid beard. This is a good beard movie. By the way, um it took me a while to realize it, but I recognized who Quinn is after the movie was over. He plays Ooh. Captain Kennedy in The Last Jedi, which I actually really like that character a lot. He's the guy, it's in the opening scenes. It's the opening scenes. He's like one of the uh, First Order officers that's like giving the orders. He's on the ship that gets blown up with the bombs. You might recognize him in the, in you know, the scene, but he's he's got a pretty prominent wow. part in that opening scene. One of the better characters in that movie. I tried to forget about that movie. Yeah, uh, why don't we jump to uh, the titular Silver Linings. Oh, man. So. I mean. I I mean, the obvious one is that he did rescue his sister. And that's my Silver Lining. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Well, it's a little more than that. I said he rescued not only his sister, but the entire island's population from this uh, obviously evil fucking cult place so i mean it's it's there Uh, i'm gonna go with another one um i mean michael sheen you know he survived he's in charge now it's only him well i don't i think michael sheen dies at the end of this movie man you think i think both of them do i think this island is i don't think dan stevens dies well yeah maybe a fate worse than death maybe but if he does, the deity did not seem like she was having a good time. Yeah, I know. But Michael Sheen, we don't see him die, so maybe he very well could live. But that's just my two cents. I think he. I don't think he makes yeah, it. Yeah, like so, like contrary, to like again, based off just if you just read a description of this movie, it's like okay, like yeah, like they get off the island, like he succeeded. But at the same time, like after you watch it, you're like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, because <laughs> like. <laughs> You, you're not exactly like that's why i thought this movie qualified because it it was kind of like yeah like he saved her but it's it's still uh, <laughs> that's like the last thing you're worried about is oh laura got off yeah, the it's like <laughs> i was like he's again fate worse than death i think it's like, it's like the fountain man you become <laughs> a part of the thing like you're there <laughs> like it's pretty fucked yeah well Maybe if we didn't do a uh, good enough job giving you a silver lining to Apostle, maybe a pick-me-up movie alternative will. So that is, of course, a double feature where you watch Apostle, and then afterwards you watch one of the movies that either Mally or I recommend as a way to uh, put you in a better mood. So, Mally, do you have a pick-me-up movie alternative? I do, um... It's actually a really, really... I think a lot of people slept on this movie. Um, Colossal. God damn it. Was that yours? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Oh, fuck. No, that's okay. That's all right. That's all right. Well, hey, we we double recommend it. Dude, Colossal's fucking great. Anne Hathaway, Dan Stevens is in this. Mm -hmm. Jason Sudeikis, who I fucking love. Mm -hmm. Um, Which, mild spoiler if you haven't seen Colossal, Jason Sudeikis is kind of the villain. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, um, which bit. is a weird role for him, but oh my god, dude, I love that movie. It's so fucking good. Like, it's a lot of fun. Anne Hathaway crushing it. Dan Stevens is good. He's not in it a lot, but he's really good in it. Um, again, yeah, Jason Sudeikis is fucking great. It's fun. Like, it's it's kind of a dark movie in regard to kind of what it's about about like depression and shit. Yeah, but it it tells that story in such a quirky fucking way yeah that it's just god it's great it it is a good movie and it was slept on for sure um that's okay i have an alternative and uh, i'm going in the lucy boynton direction and i mentioned it earlier i actually do like bohemian rhapsody i know a lot of people have their issues with it but i hated that movie so much i i think it's at least fun so give it a shot if you're interested plus 
I have to kind of back it up because it is the reason I won uh, a Clio award for my TV spot that I edited. So I'm kind of forever tied to that movie. Anyway. Uh, cool. I'm sure your TV spot's great. The movie sucks. <laughs> uh, Apostle. So. Do we recommend it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean. Absolutely. I Again, if you made it this far, it's unfortunate. But even if you haven't seen the movie and we've spoiled what happens, I think seeing is believing. Yeah. Um, oh, 100%. Like, again, Dustin, you read the description of this movie. Yeah. Before. Like, you read the synopsis. <laughs> Yeah, and, I, I would say if you know that they could handle it well, get a group of people that hasn't seen it, put it on. Don't show them the trailer. Yes, don't show them the trailer. Just be like, oh, it's like a cult, like Dan Stevens going to rescue his sister from a cult. Leave it at that. Or even better, do that, but then like try to have them guess where it's going. That would be interesting. Um, Tell them it's a werewolf movie. God damn it. If this would have been a werewolf movie, a secret werewolf movie, fuck oh, yes. That been... Secret werewolf movies are the best kind of movies. Best. And they're very, I can't, very few. I can't name a secret werewolf movie. No, Actually, no, wait, I yes, can't. I can. yes, I can. Yes, I can. Fuck. Yes, I can. Secret There's one. Secret werewolf movie? Yes. Oh. Um, spoilers. Massive spoilers for if you don't want a secret werewolf movie to be spoiled, Turn this episode off. Three, two, one. Trick or treat. Yeah, yeah. Secret I guess. werewolf movie. I guess. Yeah. Might be, Dude, the might way be, they spin it in that movie is fucking brilliant too. M- might be a future episode. Maybe. I th- oh, I would love to talk about that movie. That's my. Fi- I watched that movie. I watched two movies on Halloween. Halloween, the original, and Trick or Treat. Well, then we'll have to get Priscilla on the show, too, because she loves that movie. So Priscilla loves Trick or Treat? Oh, she fucking loves it. That's awesome. Yeah, I've seen it. Me and Priscilla don't agree on a lot of things. <laughs> I've only seen it the once when she showed me, and I liked it, but she really oh, likes so it. it's so much fun. It's All right. so much fun. Well, that this is... This movie's not fun. No, but, well, it's, it's fun. It's horrifying. I think this movie is fun, but you it's have to... It's fun in that it's horrifying. Yes. And you, now that I know what it's about, I think I can appreciate it more on an entertaining level versus what oh, the fuck is this so movie about. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that is 2018's Apostle from Gareth Evans, not Gareth Edwards. Uh, if you like what we do on our show, we have a ton, ton of episodes for you just waiting in our back catalog, as well as... Uh, well, as well as a number of movies coming in the future. Uh, so wherever you're at right now, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever, please subscribe. Please leave us uh, a rating and some feedback. We would really, really appreciate it. That helps others find our show more easily. You can also follow us on social media, uh, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you really want to get into our show, we have a subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Uh, and lastly, before we go... I have a clue for what next week's episode is all about. So next Ooh. week, my choice, uh, getting a little, a little political, but I okay. would say, okay. uh, you can almost say that Mally and I are like prophets of the airwaves. So we'll figure out what that means next huh. week. Uh, Mally. <laughs> Thank you. No idea what that means. <laughs> Thank you for recommending this movie for the show. You're fucking welcome, bro. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, uh, uh, I'm exhausted. So <sighs> this movie takes a lot out of you. Um, but well worth it. So tune in next week where we the stakes are a little lower uh than a horrific cult. So thank you for listening, everyone. Tune in next week, and as always. Excelsior. 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 Oh, look at us.